Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I want to do a spoiler-free review of the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I received a digital copy from the publisher Quirk Books in exchange for a review. And this story is set in the 1980s and follows a woman named Patricia who is a mother and housewife. She isn't particularly happy in her roles and just feels very dissatisfied. One day she ends up joining a book club with people in her neighborhood where they focus on reading true crime books every month. And that really lifts her spirits and gives her something to focus on and her along with the other women in the area just become obsessed with these true crime cases. One day a new man moves into the neighborhood. He is beautiful and kind and just very charming. And so they invite him to join their book club. And at first Patricia forms a friendship with him. However, she starts to get nervous when she starts to find out weird things about him, things that he's keeping secret. And she begins to wonder whether or not he is possibly a serial killer like the people that they are reading about. First, I like the fact that it's set in the 1980s. Unlike a lot of other books that have this time period setting, this one was less focused on the nostalgia. It wasn't constantly throwing 1980s references in your face, but instead I think it was set during that time because it was a time when people were more trusting of their neighbors and gender roles were also a lot more accepted and so it really fit the story very well. I will say that the true crime aspect of the book club also worked really well with the narrative because the different parts of the story are titled and centered around different classic true crime books like In True Blood and The Stranger Beside Me. And certainly given the synopsis of this one, you do get to see connections between the main character and the new neighbor James. And of course their relationship seems a little similar to Anne Rule and Ted Bundy and even the characters do acknowledge that so it's definitely done on purpose and you just get to see this framework which just really helped to structure the book in a really satisfying way I think if you're a true crime junkie you will very likely love this book there are so many tidbits in here admittedly I haven't read a lot of the classics but I still really enjoy those parts the other thing I really enjoyed in this book was the focus on Patricia as a mother and a homemaker it has a lot to do with where I personally am in my life but I really recognized her feelings of dissatisfaction with just being only a mother and just wanting to be more than a mom. And not that she is unhappy or does not love her children, but she wants to have a larger identity. She wants to have a larger life. And just the particular time I read this book really, really hit home to me. So I think if that sounds like a narrative that you hear in your own life or are interested in reading more about, you'll definitely get more out of this story. Now the other thing I wanted to mention about this book was the lack of suspense and it was just something that really stood out to me. I do come from a background of having read a lot of thrillers and suspense books so I do enjoy an aspect of mystery in my books and this one did not have that from the title, from the subgenre, all of that. This book is very open about the fact that this is a vampire story. And that is not a spoiler, it's just a fact. You will know it right away. But because of that, you really never wonder who James is and you kind of know where the story is going. So instead, you are not gonna get a twist or turn, you're not gonna be surprised by what happens, but instead it's about going along and watching it happen. And that ties in a lot with how Grady Hendrix tends to write his books. He really enjoys writing these self-aware horror books where he almost satirizes different aspects of the horror genre and is very smart and has a lot of winks and nods for people that read a lot of these books. You're gonna get lots of of good gems and nuggets in these. But at the same time, it was over 400 pages and I just found myself lacking that tension that normally keeps me going. It didn't have that narrative drive because again, I knew where it was going for the most part and that did somewhat lessen my personal enjoyment of it and it just came down to the fact that 
I knew exactly where it was going and it went there. And along those lines, I think it's fair to address the fact that I am not actually a big fan of the vampire subgenre. I've said it before and it just takes a lot for me to really enjoy a book that centers around a vampire narrative. I do think that this one is one of the better ones because of the fact that it almost pokes fun at the cliches and tropes of the genre. But at its core, it's still very much a vampire story and I don't know if I've ever given a vampire story five stars. The other thing to know is the fact that while I adore Grady Hendrix as a writer, I have so much respect for him as a horror author. I've heard him on so many podcasts and read all of his books and I just think that he is so smart and intelligent in his understanding of the horror genre, not only books but movies. He just understands the culture around it and weaves that into his books so well. But despite all of that, I can't say that I absolutely love any of his books. I tend to struggle with the narrative. Something about the way he writes his stories is always just a little bit off for me. And that was the case here, although of all of his fiction books, and again, I have read all of them, this is now my personal favorite. I consider this to be the best one of the group, and it was definitely enjoyable. So if you are a diehard fan of Grady Hendrix, I strongly suspect this will be a new favorite of yours. And if you are someone who really enjoys the vampire, subgenre, I think that that will definitely up your enjoyment of this one as well. So keep those two factors in mind that when I'm reviewing this, I'm always reviewing it from my personal perspective. And of course, my own biases are going to kind of seep into my overall feelings for the book. And finally, I do want to give a bit of a content warning, something I often forget to do in my reviews, but this really stood out to me. And despite the fact that this is a rather humorous book with some satire in it, at the same time, it is quite dark and actually quite disturbing because the neighbor who moves in is characterized as a bit of a child predator. You do get that narrative played out throughout the book and you do have some really uncomfortable conversations, some really disturbing scenes that take place and you have to be prepared for that. So if you're really uncomfortable with that sort of content, this might be one you want to tiptoe into. It happens towards the later half of the book and it really surprised me how dark the book got in terms of tone. So just keep that in mind. Everyone has to decide for themselves what they want to read and what they don't. So overall, I enjoyed this one and I would definitely recommend it quite widely, especially to those that are already diehard fans of Grady Henry. I think that this one is definitely one of his best and it's just a really good story. It's quite strong in terms of the vampire narrative and again it's just smart and well written and I have so much praise for Grady Hendrix as an author and I really think he once again shows his writing chops and shows his incredible background and love of the horror genre. So that's it for this video. As always I would love to know your thoughts down below. Are you planning on picking up this book and if you've already read it feel free to share your thoughts as long as you keep them spoiler free. As always, I would love for you to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't. I read a combination of horror, science fiction, thrillers, and a bit of fantasy. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.